So good afternoon. My name is Major Corey Cusack. I am the 3rd Landing Support Battalion Operations Officer. And for the role of Atlantic Dragon 22, I am the Landing Force Support Party OIC. The mission for 3rd LSB uh, in conjunction with CLR 37 is to uh, conduct a selective pier side offload of the USNS Loomis uh, during the MPF exercise at Atlanta Dragon. The advantages that we have to gain for this is to actually follow through and conduct training that we plan. Over the last two years, uh, due to COVID's negative impacts, uh, a lot of training events have been heavily planned and then uh, when it comes time for execution, they've been largely descoped or canceled altogether. So uh, a couple years ago, Third LSB sought the opportunity to align themselves with the uh, CLR 37 and this TEEPED event so that we could uh, execute this training event. All right, so what the Marines gained from this training uh, was, like I said before, an opportunity to, to actually conduct a, a large-scale training exercise from planning to completion. So that was big not only for the staff, but then turning to the Marines, uh, focus first on the landing support Marines. Um, they normally, they, they're doing their job almost every single day back in Okinawa, but what we're often offloading is uh, gray hull ships or uh, black bottom commercial ships or smaller LCU type ships and we do that on a regular basis. The landing support marines here had the opportunity to do something that uh, a large majority of them have never done before which is to offload uh, a very large vessel uh, in MPF ship. Uh, and then transitioning uh, what else the other marines got out of this was the motor transport marines. So we conducted a selective pier side offload pulling equipment off of the ship. The LS marines conducted the throughput of that equipment uh, staging it positioning it, building up a cape set to then transition from acting as an LFSP to acting as an LCE uh, where our motor transport marines were able to use that equipment forward during the FTX execution MAGTAP operations phase. Specifically, uh, the motor transport marines were able to take 17 tactical vehicles that they offloaded from the ship and conduct a long haul convoy from Blunt Island Command, Florida, up through Georgia to Marine Corps Air Station Buford and then all the way up to Camp Lejeune, North Carolina and back to Florida, 1600 miles. So what did the Marines get out of this? They got a, a great training event for the landing support Marines, uh, and then the motor transport Marines were able to do something that we couldn't necessarily do on Okinawa, and that's conduct a 1,600-mile long-haul tactical convoy. During an MPF operation, uh, there's task organized units to conduct that organization with a semblance of command and control. At the head of that C2 structure is going to be your AOG or your Arrival and Assembly Operations Group. That's the overall headquarters to command and control uh, the MPF ship offload. That headquarters for Atlantic Dragon 22 was CLR 37. Third LSB was tasked to provide support uh, as the landing force support party. Now that is a subordinate unit that is under the OPCON of the AOG and our main responsibility is to provide throughput uh, at the Port Operations Group, the BDOP Beach Operations Group and the Arrival Departure Airfield uh, Control Group as well as provide the Movement and Control Center. Uh, the LFSP, its, its key organization is to really conduct that throughput of personnel, equipment and supplies off of the ship under the cognizance and the C2 of the AOG. So we are in our role as the LFSP during the actual offload itself. Uh, and then when we transition to, hey, the offload is complete and it's time to uh, take that gear that we have assembled into a combat capability for the commander to then go forth and use that capability, uh, we take our LFSP hat off and we put our LCE, our logistics combat element hat on. So we transition from being more headquartered under uh, the task organization and structure of conducting an MPF ship offload to falling under a, a typical MAGTAF structure of the command element, the air combat element, logistics combat element, the ground combat element, and third LSB will act as the LCE, the logistics combat element, taking that equipment and taking it forward, for this case for an exercise, to which we then subsequently conducted uh, the Motor T long haul convoy. The direction that third LSB is going with this training under its belt is first and foremost uh, number one, building a foundation of what it is to conduct MPF operations. This is our first rep and set uh, to get comfortable and good and gain and maintain proficiency in landing support operations and pre-positioning operations. Uh, from here, I think that really sets conditions for us to move to the next level as the Marine Corps becomes more comfortable uh, with conducting not necessarily a full MPF ship offload, but the selective pier side uh, ship offloads which are conducted at Atlantic Dragon. Uh, that then allows us to be a more ready force to be able and more capable to conduct a, uh, an in-stream as well as a subsequent pier side offload uh, at upcoming exercises in the 3MEF AO. Yeah, third LSB is going to build off of the training and everything that we've learned at Atlantic Dragon 22 with the MPF uh, pier side selective offload here uh, and we hope to act as the LFSP and the Port Operations Group 
uh, when there's MPF operation conducted at Resolute Dragon in the Indo-PACOM AOR. I think Marines join the Marine Corps uh, to do their MOS, to go out and get a ch an opportunity to do something. Atlantic Dragon 22 provided all the Marines and sailors uh, that came out here for this exercise an opportunity to do just that and more. They were able to do uh, not only their MOS, uh, landing support and motor T being the preponderance, uh, and the offload of the ship is really the, the main thing that we got after while we were out here. Um, but they were also able to do subsequent training with that gear that we offloaded from the MPF ship. Long haul convoy, railhead operations group training, um, unit level training, land nav, confidence course, um, COC operations. Uh, and I'd just like to conclude with um, Marines that we, we knew that we were gonna do great things, did, did even better than we assumed that they would. Uh, and Marines who you didn't necessarily know that their, their capabilities, even uh, PFCs, Lance Corporals, uh, would blow us out of the water uh, with their expectations. Our unit, specifically 3rd LSB, is a, a more ready force. We are now trained up in uh, conducting MPF operations. It's built us a foundation and we're uh, a better force, more able to conduct those in the future. So my role in Atlanta Dragon, I was the MAGTAV offload liaison officer. So I was that critical link in between the arrival and assembly operations group and the offload preparation party on the ship. So it's the Marine Air Ground Task Force. Um, so what that is, is basically it's the MEF size level. It's the, each individual element within the MAGTAP. So you have the ground combat element, the command element, logistics combat element, and that's all makes up the MAGTAP. With like the way it was executed, so we had the different elements that came in. We had the Navy element that was falling under with the MAGTAF, and then we had the Naval Cargo Handling Battalion that came in and offloaded the lighter ridge. So the goal for the MPF offload for Atlantic Dragon is we were experimenting with an EABO concept, so we were going through and doing a selective offload. So in a traditional MPF offload, you were removing all the items off the ship, dispersing them to the individual elements of the MAGTAF, and for Atlantic Dragon, we were experimenting with selective pieces that we wanted to use to build a cape set. So for example, for us, we built a FARP. So that was our end goal, is we selectively pulled equipment off the ship and built that capability, vices offloading everything off the ship. Uh, we were focused on 51 items for the actual selective offload that we were looking at. Um, those items were pulled out of the ship. They were processed by the LFSP. Um, they were used those for further on training during Atlanta Dragon for our field portion. So the overall performance of the Marines was outstanding. Um, these Marines were excited. This is something that they have or never have got to do before. Um, going through with the execution with the OPP, traveling out to the ship with a small vessel, um, they got to climb the aft wrap ladder onto the ship. Um, they said it was just amazing. Um, the Marines did extremely well. They went through each of the processes for breaking down, not only um, checking the equipment on ship, um, they went through and identified all those items for selective offload, maintained that 51 item and pushing it out here to the LFSP and through their processing, it went extremely well. So we're looking to the future um, for the Fort Design 2030. We're looking for those EABO concepts. Um, stuff that we've done in the past, not necessarily what we're gonna be doing for the future. So these small things right here, these exercises, is what's gonna build up to that time. So during Atlanta Dragon, uh, first role that Vic played would be, uh, we provided a technical assistance and advisory team, uh, which is, folks to do QA and uh, obviously help with the conduct of the offload of the ship and arrival assembly operations. Um, really just experienced people to, uh, to kind of help guide and, and mentor um, and provide some, you know, historicals of best, best principles, best practices uh, for offloading equipment and getting it through the, through the staging areas, through the arrival assembly uh, association lots and all that. Uh, the second thing that we did, and this is kind of unique for, for Atlantic Dragon, I think will be uh, the way going forward, is we, uh, we've been testing our Big Forward concept. So for Atlantic Dragon, some of the things that we tested was first an, uh, an ashore-based pre-positioning node. So the MAGNAF not just drawing equipment from the ship, but drawing it from an ashore site, um, and then using that to build, the, to you know, generate their cape sets. The second, second bit to that was, you know, once the arrival and assembly process was completed, we used members of the TAT to create a big forward team to provide uh, maintenance support uh, for the MAGTAF. So that, whether that was expediting parts, which we did, um, 
you know, assisting with uh, maintenance support with some of our maintenance, uh, Marine Corps maintenance contractors that were able to help troubleshoot vehicles um, forward of the, the arrival and assembly areas and, and support the long range convoy. A lot of the planning that we did leading up to this, um, you know, we started working with 3MEF uh, probably about six months ago. They reached out to us. We had uh, the MPC hosted here at, at BIC. Uh, a lot of the folks um, from, from the command team, from uh, planners um, and, and, and executors came to that MPC and uh, we, we got a lot of really good, you know, work done there. And then we just continued. We started having a weekly sync. Um, and I think, you know, going forward, like, that's an after action that we have. It's just how uh, incredible it was, like the, the, the keeping those lines of communications open um, and how successful the planning was as a result of that. So when we got here, uh, or when the MAGTAF arrived here, there was folks that I'd only known through uh, Teams chat or through uh, talking on the conference call. And, uh, but it was, we were ready to work, ready to go, um, and, and everybody kind of knew uh, what needed to be done because of all those discussions and, and work that we'd had prior to. I think that was one of the major successes. And then uh, as we offloaded and we started to do, to work through the, uh, you know, the play of the problem, drawing the ashore base gear, um, seeing the, the LS Marines out there just getting it done, the Motor T Marines just getting it done, uh, those Marines were really well rehearsed and uh, so it made things go just super smooth. Yeah, so I think, uh, I think MPF operations, whether they're a shore-based or a float-based, are, are incredibly important because it's, a, it's not a capability that's used often, but when you need to use it, you need to know how to do it. And, uh, and it's, it's complex. There's a, there's a lot of complexities to offloading that ship and uh, marshalling the equipment. But uh, the Marines getting to, to do these rehearsals annually or semi-annually, uh, I think that really allows them to understand what's available to them in the program, helps commanders understand um, the timelines associated with you know, drawing MPF gear and how, uh, how that affects their, their ultimate mission downrange. And uh, then it also just gives the Marines a great opportunity to get out and do some, some training with uh, top-notch equipment. We provide the technical assistance and advisory team. Uh, their role is to uh, help offload that ship, help uh, provide the QAs during the JLTIs for the beginning of you know, drawing the equipment in the arrival and assembly phase. But we also provide a lot of technical expertise and knowledge, just uh, folks that are, that are pretty well seasoned and very familiar with MPF operations. So we can help with the planning, we can help with um, throughput operations, timelines, um, we provide technical assistance with the I-Prime nodes and make sure that everybody's up and running with, uh, with I-Prime and uh, the tracking is uh, you know, done correctly and, and efficiently as possible. The second bit that we, we did specifically for this exercise was we established a short pre-positioning node. And this is a bit of a, te a test run for Blunt Island. Um, but knowing that the future, you know, we're going to have a shore-based pre-positioning as well as a float-based pre-positioning. So having that a shore-based pre-positioning uh, gave us a rep in establishing that node and it gave the MAGTAF uh, a rep in, uh, in drawing from that node and had it having those capabilities uh, available to them for their Cape Set generation. And then the third thing that, uh, that we did was uh, a, a bit of a big forward test, which was the support that we provide once the arrival and assembly operations are complete. Um, in the case of Atlantic Dragon, we did a test of a maintenance, uh, a forward maintenance uh, point to support the long range convoy that the MAGTAF was doing. Um, so we sent ma uh, maintenance contractors and government reps and uniform reps uh, well forward of the a arrival and assembly areas, the AOEs and uh, we're able to provide you know, parts uh, ex expedited parts. We um, airdropped parts. Uh, we were able to, to participate in an, in an airdrop of uh, some Class 9 equipment. Um, and really just to support the MAGTAF with uh, some technical expertise on the maintenance side of things as well. Uh, so our, our maintenance contractors were able to provide some additional troubleshooting and help, uh, help the convoy get on the road quicker. So we'll be participating in uh, Resolute Dragon. Uh, we're looking forward to that exercise and some of the concepts that the MLG is uh, looking to advance. 
Uh, we fully support that and, and we want to be a great partner along with that. And uh, we also want to test some things, some additional Big Forward things there, um, specifically in the maintenance support and uh, you know how, how we do that forward, how we do that um, from a float, uh, focusing specifically on a float for that exercise. And uh, how do those, how do those uh, maintenance contractors, how do they tie in uh, with the TAT and being able to uh, either expedite parts from the ship or provide uh, additional maintenance support in the arrival and assembly area? Um, or do we you know, swap out vehicles to um, assist the MAGTAF in, in getting their maintenance production uh, faster? So those are all kind of things that we're looking at is how, how we can support uh, the MAGTAF, obviously it's, you know, what the MAGTAF wants, um, but working with the same, uh, the same units and the same folks that have participated in this, I think we'll be able to do a whole lot of uh, interesting things during Resolute Dragon.